Hi, this is Ken Willis of Cadence Design Systems. Welcome to Sigurdy Tech Tips. Today we bring you another installment of how to sign off your design using a PowerWare signal integrity methodology. Our video today will show you how signal integrity engineers can overcome the challenge of extracting large S parameters for their memory interfaces, which may not simulate effectively in their circuit simulator. Successfully implementing memory interfaces, such as DDR4, is one of the most challenging tasks faced by SI engineers. Early in the design process, memory interfaces are typically analyzed using ideal power so that first order signal integrity and crosstalk problems can be assessed and corrected. However, significant challenges are faced by SI engineers during the sign off stage when power aware signal integrity analysis is performed to assess the effect of simultaneous switching noise or SSN. To evaluate SSN, Interconnect models must include signal, power, and ground structures, as well as the coupling between them. Hybrid or full-wave 3D field solvers are often used to extract S-parameter models for the parasitics of the PCB. Unfortunately, S-parameters for large DDR data buses may not simulate well in many circuit simulators, resulting in convergence or stability issues in the results. To help address this, a conversion process to a simpler broadband SPICE model can be performed but this conversion often requires modification to the model for passivity and causality, which can leave the SI engineer wondering about the accuracy of their SSN simulation. With Sigurdy, SI engineers have an alternative method. Our FDTD direct simulation methodology calls our unique hybrid solver in combination with our finite difference time domain or FDTD engine, which solves PCB and package geometries directly and performs PowerWare SI analysis in the time domain without S-parameter. Signal integrity engineers can confidently and accurately perform their detailed SI analysis, including SSN effects, without having to process large, complex S-parameters. With SSN simulation results captured accurately and simulating cleanly, SI engineers will have high confidence when they sign off on the memory interface that the simulation results will match the results measured in the lab. This helps reduce design respins and gets product to market on time. The results may be higher market share and who knows, maybe even a nice end of the year bonus for your product development team. In today's video, you will see us utilize the Allegro Sigurdy SI Base and PowerWare SI option. To learn more about these products, visit us at www.cadence.com. Now I will turn it over to my colleague, Jen Mu. 来介绍一下 Cadence Singurity 2016发行版的一个新功能就是使用时域有限差分的方法在系统级直接进行layout分析 最后进行波形的处理，但是这种方法不允许直接访问layout的环境。如果设计工程师需要修改layout并且重新仿真，他们必须在layout里边进行修改，然后重做模型提取和模块赋值。对于面向电源的仿真，提取出的模型通常采用
，在仿真完成后，使用和提提取模型相同的方式处理，并且报告结果。有了这个工作流程，用户就不需要预先提取模型，这就有助于避免 Spice 时域仿真器的某些收敛问题。更重要的是，用户可以便捷的在系统级分析当中。修改 PCB 的 layout 来进行假设分析。在 System S I 中，打开并行总线分析工作流程，我们可以设置控制器、内存和电源，并添加其他互联部件。我现在来演示一下新的基于时域有限差分方法的工作流程。我们新添加了一个模块。用于直接运行 System S I 当中面向电源的仿真。使用这个模块，我们可以设置名称、选择电路板文件，并给出仿真的相信息。稍后，我们将启用基于时域有限差分方法的仿真器。现在，我们打开 Speed 2000来选择信号。这一次是通过 Speed 2000里面关联 Layout 的工作流程。我们可以选择信号，设定网格，并在器件和信号之间获取连接信息。再把所有设置进行存储之后，退出 Speed 2000现在 ，System S I 中显示了电路板的外接信息。我们就可以建立 PCB 模型和器件模型之间的连接。同样，我们输入仿真参数和配置模型，就像我们在 Spice 模型提取过程当中所做的一样。当开始仿真以后 ，System S I 隐形调用基于时域有限差分方法的仿真器，仿真结果显示了非理想电源对信号的影响。呃，总的来说，这个视频显示了在 System S I 中一个新的仿真工作流程，也就是使用基于时域有限差分方法的仿真器。它可以帮助设计工程师在系统级有效地进行针对高速总线和串行设计的假设分析。Thank you for watching another edition of Sigurdi Tech Tips. For information on products used in today's video, click on the links below or contact your local Cadence sales representative or Cadence channel partner.